Welcome everyone. Hi there. Welcome to our all day movie workshop. I'm Peter. And um, yeah, I'm going to be the host today. And I can just give you a little run through of how this, uh, how these all day movie workshops run if you're new. So we're going to start with a movie with David. And uh, then afterwards, we'll have a 10 minute break. And then we're going to have uh, breakout rooms where you can share anything that came up for you during the movie. And then uh, after that, we'll have a 45 minute break. And then I'll be ho holding the uh, closing session today. So um, I'm going to pass it straight over to David now. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Peter. Hi, everyone. Welcome. <laughs> I always keep saying the same thing, but we're all in for a big treat today. Because <laughs> we are. <laughs> we really are. It's going to be a, a very miraculous day, and I'm sure as we go through it, you're just going to feel your heart opening, and you'll feel your faith expanding, and you'll feel the strength of God growing stronger inside of you. And that is always a good thing. Why? Because God is our goal. We just have one goal, and it's God. <laughs> so, uh, and the beauty of this is we can use so many different movies to reach our goal. <laughs> We're, we could end up calling this Movies for God, <laughs> because we just want to experience our Creator, really. You know, that's all that we, we really want. So we have gathered here today, sounds like the beginning of a wedding ceremony. Dearly beloved, we have gathered here today to open up to the presence of God's love. And we have over 60 people from around the world here going through this beautiful experience today. And we have some new people. I think we have an, a new person from the United States is with us, Michael. And we have, we have uh, a new person from Austria joining us, a new person, a Course in Miracles teacher from Iceland uh, that Svava met that's joining us today, and Eva from Spain uh, joining us. So we have four new people joining in our group, our happy group of movie watchers. And we have amazing poll uh, themes. That's what, that's what we cue our, our movie workshops about. We just put out polls on Tribe and on Facebook, and, and we collect the votes to see what it is that you really want to experience. And then we join in prayer to receive the movie that will be the best way of, of experiencing those themes as living experience in your heart, not just some theological thing or not something that's on your wish list, but now. <laughs> experience it now, right now. This is the point of, of power, the point of experience. So this week, the themes that you voted on, the number one theme was releasing judgment through joining. That's exciting, releasing judgment through joining. Because many people tell me, I, I'm just a habitual, addictive judger, <laughs> and I don't know how to stop. And, and our first theme is through joining, through joining our minds, through joining in the same purpose. Through joining in forgiveness, we are shown how we can release this uh, egoic pattern of, of judgment that, that clouds our mind and come into the blazing light of truth. The second theme, only one vote behind, was moving through darkness by standing in faith. That is a beautiful invitation for us to, to stand in faith, to expand our faith. Our faith in what is unseen to us. Uh, it's, it's in our hearts, but it's, it's not with the five senses. We need to learn to, to live 
the love in our heart without relying on the five senses because the ego made the world and the ego made the five senses. Truth is one. Truth isn't five. <laughs> you know, if anybody tries to tell you, I'm going to tell you now about the five-fold truth. Say, no. Truth is one. There is only one love, one light, one source, one God, and one experience of heaven. There's not multiple heavens. You don't go through five gates and you don't go into five experiences. You go into love. Love is one. And so we need faith, though, to go into the oneness. <laughs> because our, our experiences in this world have blocked us from the light. They have blinded us from the truth. I was listening, Jesus was telling me yesterday, he was saying, not one thing in this world is true. Not one thing in this world is true. Oh, okay, that's why you say it's a world of illusions, because not one thing is true. A lot of times, among our seven billion human beings, there's always these discussions about belief. Well, I believe this. Well, I believe this. Well, I believe that. Well, I believe this. And Jesus is saying, just don't forget, not one thing the world believes is true. Not even one. Not one thing the world believes is true. That fits in with lesson number one, nothing I see means anything. That's probably why nothing I see means anything, because not one thing the world believes is true. So. We're going for a huge experience, and we need a lot of faith. We need faith in the Holy Spirit to take us there, and that's what we're going to do today. The third theme with 59 votes was taking correction without defense. Oh, isn't that delicious? Taking correction without defense. Wouldn't you love it if you could just be so open to correction that you didn't have a defensive reaction when anybody was speaking to you? When mom was pointing her finger at you, you could just smile, a big broad smile, and take the correction from the Holy Spirit within without any defense whatsoever. With no shoulds, no buts. <laughs> No, however. <laughs> you just notice how you're, you're in a discussion and something wants to come up in you and say, however, <laughs> or but. <laughs> no, no ifs, ands, or buts. Taking correction without defense. How lovely that, that is phrased. I like that, taking correction without defense. It could be a mantra, taking correction without defense. Happy day, happy day. I like that, taking correction without defense. Then, another one is true versus false responsibility. Wouldn't it be great? We could have that one in the poll every week. Every movie we, sh we watch together could be true versus false responsibility. Why? Because when we take responsibility for the world, for the roles of the world, which the ego invented, for the situations of the world, which the ego invented, we are taking false responsibility. And what does Jesus tell us in A Course in Miracles? Jesus tells us you are not responsible for the error. You are responsible for accepting the correction of the error. Isn't that wise? I, could, I probably could listen to that a hundred times a day, a reminder. You are not responsible for the error. You are responsible for accepting the correction. And that correction is in this moment. So we don't have to put it off onto time and think, when will I accept the correction in the future? Jesus says, mm, never. Or did I accept the correction in the past? No, you did not. <laughs> But right now is our fresh opportunity. We always have a fresh opportunity for the miracle. Always a fresh opportunity to accept the correction. 
And the correction is just innocence. It's not some kind of theoretical or theological uh, precept. It's, it's innocence. That's all we're responsible for is accepting our innocence. And what a great movie we have today <laughs> for accepting innocence in the face of all of the ego's games and attacks and accusations to be able to stand strong in innocence and feel the glory of happiness in the face of anything that the ego can throw at us. And then the last one is facing the fear of failure, letting people down. Has anybody ever faced the fear of failure and letting people down? <laughs> wow, I think there's a little guilt in the mind if we're afraid of letting people down. Or maybe we even feel like we let ourselves down. I'm not just talking about the body self, maybe we have an ontological guilt. How could I be so stupid to, to buy this belief in separation when I, when I had heaven given to me by my Creator? How could I, how could I be so dumb to, to choose to separate from my source? You know, Jesus is like, well, don't get too hard on yourself, it really never happened. However, I want you to accept the correction that I'm giving you, that it never happened. You never had the power to separate from the Creator. You never could separate from the Creator. It's impossible to be apart from the Creator. So, I think today will give us a great movie. What is our movie? Some of you have seen the posters already on the internet. That's right, it's Sully. We're going to all watch Sully today. That's a nickname for an, an airline uh, pilot, a captain. His actual name is, is uh, Captain Chesney. And that's a nice name too, Captain Chesney. But we like to call people by their nicknames. We sometimes do that. We, we have nicknames sometimes for uh, our pets, we have nicknames for each other, they're affectionate, playful names, and so Sully is the nickname that Captain Chesney has. And uh, his co-pilot, Jeff, calls him Sully, the, I think all the flight attendants call him Sully, so we're going to call him Sully too, because it's affectionate, playful name, Sully. It's not a common name, but it's chosen for this movie. It's the title of the movie. Who made this movie? Who is the director of this movie, Sully? Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood, that's a dirty, hairy Clint Eastwood? Yeah, the gauntlet. Clint Eastwood's contribution, yes, to the, the Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment. That's right, Clint is coming in with Sully. He's the director. He was... He was just watching the events unfold back in uh, January, around I think mid-January of 2009. Clint was just watching the TV and he's like watching this airline pilot and he's watching things unfold and I think probably already he's thinking, that would be a great movie. Good job, Clint. Because then eventually Clint contacted Sully and said, yeah, I'm thinking of making a movie. Who would you like? to play you. Sully, he's so humble, he's like, I don't know, I don't know. So Clint said, how about Tom Hanks? Yeah, that's right, that's good. Tom Hanks, that's a good one. You see, the spirits, even with the movie, the spirits bringing the characters together, the director, the actor, the, the, the one who, who seemed to go through the events, and, and Sully is, so this is, people say, David, you're not showing a religious movie. No, this, this movie is not overtly religious. There's not really religious symbols in this movie. But wow, we can get the greatest lesson of all from a movie that's not religious. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it's not really, it's not even spiritual overtly. It's not talking about auras or uh, different things. But... Jesus loves to use movies about events that happened in the world 
to show and teach the direction toward the kingdom of heaven. And so when I was looking at the themes for this week, I went through the themes and I started to look at some different um, movies. Uh, this one jumped out again, just jumped out like, wow, this is perfect for our themes for this week. This is so helpful. And so I thought, have I ever done a, a movie gathering with this movie Sully before? And I, I had. I've already done it before. So that means that I had to really pray to Jesus and say, how do you want to do it this time? What do you want to use this movie for today and to help us reach these amazing themes? And basically, Jesus was telling me, he said, well, I want you to go to the course and I want you to look up a word uh, and uh, that will be our starting point. So I said, well, what's the word you want me to look up in A Course in Miracles? And Jesus said, the word is emergencies. Look up emergencies <laughs> in A Course in Miracles. Because this movie is, is about a, a flight, a passenger flight uh, on a big airliner, a, a, a US Air airliner, and this would qualify as an emergency. So what, did, what does Jesus have to say in The Course in Miracle about emergencies? Well, he puts it in quotes. So he doesn't really believe in emergencies, but he's playing with this, you know, because he knows that we, as a human being, do believe in emergencies. <laughs> and if your plane is going down, some of you, I don't know how many of you have flown, but when your plane is going down, and it's going down toward the earth, and it's not going down toward a runway, <laughs> it's going down toward something else, <laughs> then, for many people, that's an emergency. That's not something that you plan for. Even when you're in a plane and you're getting ready to take up, take off, and they give you their spiel, you know. In the case of emergency water landing, find the, the life preserver under your seat. And, and then they pull it out and make sure you, bow, you blow on it. You know, they give you the whole deal. But in the case of rare a rare water landing. It's pretty rare. It's very rare. I mean, I've been flying for I don't know how many years and I've not had a water landing. <laughs> I've not gone down into the river or an ocean. Uh, I've landed hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of airports all over the world, but I have not landed on water. And I'm not in a pontoon boat either with the, you know, these things. I'm talking a big airliner, one of the big jets, jumbo jets, and going, for, going into the drink, <laughs> going splash. Now, so I, I checked with Jesus. He said, yeah, just start by looking up emergencies. So the first thing that I found was that he was, he was saying that the final stage in the development of trust is where he mentions emergencies. This is uh, paragraph eight in the, the section when he's describing the, the development of trust and the stages you go through towards enlightenment. And so he, he is referring to this, he's, he's basically saying, finally there is a period of achievement. It is here that learning is consolidated. So this, he's describing the state of mind that is our destiny, that we will reach. We're all, all of us will reach it. And learning is consolidated. In other words, we're finally getting the, the goal of forgiveness. We're finally experiencing the goal of forgiveness. And he says, now what was seen as merely shadows before become solid gains to be counted on in all emergencies. <laughs> That's what this is for. That's why we're practicing mind training. We're practicing so when the emergency comes, in quotes, emergency, we're ready. 
We've got the whole of the Holy Spirit with us when this emergency arises. And he says, count it on in all emergencies as well as tranquil times. Isn't that fantastic? Wow, what a state of mind. It's just as good for the emergencies as it is for the tranquil times. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's the same state of mind for everything. It's just a unified state of, of, of awareness, of, of mind. So I was very excited about that. And then I asked Jesus, okay, so you want to use this movie to uh, teach us how to be calm during perceived emergencies. He said, yeah, exactly. That's what this movie's for. Because that's what Sully is. He, this is a, a pilot, an airline pilot, who at the time of this event, which happened in 2009, in January 2009, in New York City, uh, at the time of this event, Sully was a, an experienced pilot. I don't know, if, if I'm on a plane and my plane's going down in the drink, I want Sully. I, I pick Sully as my, my captain, my pilot. I want a, four, a guy with 40 years of experience taking this plane down into the drink. I want somebody who's calm in that cockpit. I want somebody who's confident in that cockpit. I want somebody who can act spontaneously with grace in the cockpit, and I'm sure you would too. <laughs> because what Sully is about, if we don't have to get into too many spiritual words here, but Sully is, a, is like at this point a 40-year experienced pilot, and his main thing is safety. He is into safety. He's even got at this point, a, a website, he's running his own air safety consulting business. That's who I want piloting my plane if I'm going in the drink. Somebody who's into air safety. Because water landing is rare. It's, it's the rarest of rare things. There's more crashes than there are water landings. That, that's a rare thing. And, and so, Sully is into air safety, but more than that, he is experienced. And I don't know about you, but even on the spiritual journey, I actually want to learn from those that are experienced. That's why I think Jesus is a really good teacher, <laughs> because he's so experienced. He's done it already, so that is, is what I want in a teacher. I want a teacher who's already done whatever needs to be done. Jesus did it. He's, he's done it. Is he experienced? Yes. Beyond years, beyond the count of years, Jesus is experienced. And Sully is a very experienced pilot, so he's going to be the main character of the movie named after him. And also, we could say that, let's just give some context. Okay, 2009, January 2009, New York City. What, what do I think of when I think of airplanes, New York City? Hmm, I think of September 11th, 2001. I think I roll the clock back about eight, eight years or so, a little over eight years, to uh, what happened September 11th with, with uh, jetliners being hijacked and flown into the, the Twin Towers and the uh, the Pentagon of the United States. So when I think of New York City and airplanes, I've been there before. I've been to LaGuardia, JFK. I've been in those airports a lot. So this, is, this event we're going to watch today is an event that happened in, in 2009, in January, and it's, it's about eight years, it's about eight years, uh, eight or nine years after the 9-11 thing. So you remember what happened with 9-11, and there was a lot that went on with 9-11. Probably we could do a movie on that sometime, too. That, that might be considered an emergency, too. <laughs> but here he is just on a, on a cold morning in January. He's going to be flying 
the plane scheduled to go to, to the south, but um, he's only going to be in the air uh, with this plane for about three and a half minutes. So a lot's going to happen in uh, three and a half minutes. Uh, that's, it's the focus of the, of the movie is the event itself. That's not a lot of time, three and a half minutes. And then he's going to be facing a, a situation that is so rare, so rare. This is, the pilots go fly their whole career and don't have a water landing. So he's going to face a water landing in one of the biggest cities in the whole world, and he doesn't have many seconds to deal with this because some of that three and a half minutes is just the plane taking off and beginning to climb and gain some altitude. Okay? That's the beginning of the takeoff, and that's, that's a bulk of the time of his three and a half minutes are, are taking off on a cold winter morning in uh, New York City. And then, this is a big aircraft. In fact, something is going to happen uh, when this plane is just taking off that is so rare that this is the only time it's happened in human history to a plane this big over a city this big at an altitude this low. This is, this is one of those rare once in history moments when birds fly into both engines, the only two engines of the aircraft, at the same time. And both engines are taken out. So what do we got? We have a big airline over one of the biggest cities in the world and birds have hit the engines, and just to put yourself in Sully's shoes for a moment, it's the first time and the only time in history that anything like this has happened. And with such a big aircraft over the big city and at such a low altitude. And all he has to face is that he basically is in a glider now, a glider, a big glider, over one of the largest cities in the world with buildings, lots of people, buildings underneath him. And all he has to do is face it calmly with the Holy Spirit and, and follow his intuition. Now, why are we showing this movie is because that's exactly what we need. That's exactly what all human beings need is to learn how to follow their intuition. And even though Sully is not known as a guru, he's not known as, as a spiritual teacher or a minister or a counselor, he's an airline pilot, but he's, he's got a prayer in his heart. I think every time he takes off with the, with the passenger crew, from every airport, I think for 40 years, however he's been flying, I think the prayer in Sully's heart is for safety. And not just his safety, but the safety of all the passengers that are on his aircraft and for all the people in the airport and for all the people that he flies over. You have to start to take on a, a, a prayer for everyone. Not a prayer just for you personally, but a prayer for those around you. A prayer for everyone on the planet. I would say actually a prayer for everyone who's ever lived. Why not? Let's just use all of history. Prayer for everyone in all of history and why not include the extraterrestrials, the aliens? Let's pray for the aliens. Why should we exclude anyone in our prayer? That's what I like about Sully. He has got a prayer in his heart for safety of everyone. And I think that, in that sense, it's spiritual because, because if you've got a job that involves safety and you have a job to do in terms, we'll say, transportation there and flight and safety and, and just being friendly, 
uh, towards all the people you meet every day, that's, that's a pretty good uh, list there. Safety, friendliness, transport, air transport. Uh, that's, a, that's a good list for your occupation. And, and yet for us, why is this so important? Why is Jesus showing us this movie? Is because he's telling us we need to be intuitive. Not just say the words, I would like to be more intuitive, but we would actually like to learn how to be intuitive. Why do I bring this up? Is because in our minds, some of us have also tried to be analytical. You can't really be analytical and intuitive at the same time. <laughs> Because analysis involves comparison, and intuition does not. Uh, we, have, we have learned many things in this world, and we've learned how to analyze. And uh, I think in psychotherapy we have a nice phrase, we call it the uh, paralysis of analysis. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm not so into being paralyzed. I do not like paralysis. I studied psychology undergrad. I studied psychology uh, in graduate school, and I am not excited about analysis or paralysis. I, I'm excited about listening to the voice for God. I'm excited about being lined up with Jesus and being intuitive. That's what Jesus wants from us. He wants us to be intuitive. Now, like, like everyone, you know, you're probably saying, yeah, I, I would like to learn more about being intuitive. Maybe this movie can help me. Well, I said to Jesus, is there anything else that you could say from the Course? And uh, he said, yeah, actually, um, he said, I have a few things to say in chapter 17 and section six. Some of you remember this section from A Course in Miracles. It's called Setting the Goal. I love this section. Because setting the goal is Jesus simply saying, okay, let's be intuitive here. I'm going to teach you how to be intuitive. So what he says in the beginning of this chapter, actually section six of this chapter, Setting the Goal, he says, the practical application of the Holy Spirit's purpose is extremely simple, but it is unequivocal. So most of us know what simple means, but Jesus is saying it's extremely simple, but it's unequivocal. So, of course, as I'm reading this, I, I really, I, I like how in Google you can just touch the word and, and then it tells you, uh, look up. Okay, let's find some adjectives for unequivocal. Wait, what, are we, what are we talking here, Jesus? You're telling us we have to be unequivocal. What does that mean? Unambiguous. Ooh, unmistakable. Indisputable. Incon incontrovertible, undeniable, clear-cut, crystal clear, plain, well-defined, explicit, specific, unqualified, unreserved, direct, straightforward, blunt, candid, point-blank, Straight from the shoulder. <laughs> Certain, decisive, emphatic, absolute. Whoo! Okay, gotcha. Nice little word definition there. I'll say it again. The practical application of the Holy Spirit's purpose is extremely simple, but it's unequivocal. In fact, in order to be simple, it must be unequivocal. And he puts must in italics. Jesus is like really given a lesson in intuition. Whoa, he's going to show us how to be intuitive. Because apparently the way we've been living as human beings is not very helpful at all. 
<laughs> Jesus is saying, you're, you're constantly recalling the past and you're always worried and concerned about the future. Not helpful. Are you going to reach heaven with that kind of perception? No. Even though you're already there, you're not going to know it if you keep living in what is already the past and thinking you're, you're present in something that's already over and gone. So, he's saying that the setting of the Holy Spirit's goal is general. Now, he will work with you to make it specific. For application is specific. So, this movie today is showing us that we, we have a, a calm airline pilot called Sully, and he's going to be faced with an extremely rare, I mean, once in history uh, type of uh, double bird hit uh, planes going down. Uh, this is extremely rare, and that's an emergency, as Jesus would call it. Uh, he's going to show us a lot about how to be intuitive in the face of an emergency. Because if we can do it during the emergency, we have no problem during the tranquil times. <laughs> it's like piece of cake. How's your day going? Tranquil, tranquil, tranquil. We want to be able to handle the emergencies so well that we finally don't even know what an emergency is. Because <laughs> to, the, to the human perspective, you know, Jesus going on the cross, that was an emergency. I don't think he saw it that way. I think he was inside, he was like calm as tranquil as can be even though there was some blood coming out of the arms and legs, it was tranquility. Wow, if Jesus can have such tranquility during the crucifixion, and Sully can remain tranquil after the birds had taken away his engines, <laughs> I think we can do it too. Those are some good role models. Those are some really good role models, Jesus and, and Sully up in the air. Why is this such a good teaching device? Well, first of all, throughout human history, most human beings stay on Earth. You know, it's, it's only in relatively recent centuries after the Wright brothers invented airplane that we have people flying off the, off the ground. And so this is kind of a recent occurrence in human history. It's not like we're used to humans being in the air. And... Some people would say, yeah, it's a little bit vulnerable when you get bodies up that high in the, in the air. There's a long way to fall. It's, it's not like falling off a ladder. <laughs> it's a little further. So this is a fantastic teaching device if you have an identification with the body because these bodies are going up and they're coming down. <laughs> And they're coming down in a place where usually the bodies don't come down into rivers. That's not exactly an intended destination. And, and even the passengers going on this, they're, they're very happy and they're not thinking about coming down in this way. But, uh, but they've got a good uh, captain. They've got a, a captain that's concerned about safety and a captain who, who can remain calm in the face of the most surprising emergency that you could imagine. So Jesus goes on to say that in any situation in which you are uncertain, the first thing to consider very simply is, what do I want to come of this? What is it for? For Sully, it's safety. He's taken off and he wants safety. He wants safety to come of this flight. The clarification of the goal belongs at the beginning, for it is this which will determine the outcome. In the ego's procedure, this is reversed. To the ego, the situation becomes the determiner of the outcome, which can be anything. So, this is a good movie in cause and effect. This is why we do the mind training. This is why we have truth 
as our goal, God as our goal, because it's the only way that our mind will become calm, is having truth as the goal. If you want your day to be peaceful, and if you want to be certain of a peaceful outcome, regardless of the situation, you have to have truth as your goal. You see, Jesus is like the master metaphysician. He's the master teacher. He's telling us, you want peace? Yeah, that's good. That's the goal of my Course in Miracles, actually, is peace, peace of mind, inner peace. But you have to learn to put truth as your goal, and that means hold truth in your mind. You want the truth more than anything else. You want God more than anything else. More than any form you can think of. More than any image or memory of time you can think of. You want the memory of God. That will take you to truth. Because if you, if you want the truth and you want to be peaceful, they go together. Truth and peace go together. They, they, they require the same conditions in your mind. And that condition is to be in the miracle, to, to, to transcend the ego. And this movie is, is a beautiful teaching device, not only at how important it is to be calm and to follow guidance, but also when the witnesses of the world seem to accuse you, when the witnesses of the world seem to doubt you, when even your own wife on a phone call says, Sully, why did you do it? <laughs> Nothing like the wife questioning <laughs> your motives. <laughs> why did you take them down to the water? <laughs> you know, it's like, it, so this just shows us we have to be ready for the role of the accuser in whatever form it may come. It may come from a panel of aviation uh, experts, experts who are, are saying, uh, why did you do what you did? It may come from uh, any direction. It can come from a, a television interview. Why would you do such a thing? Why would you take... 155 people into the water. You see, the ego is always going to doubt everything that we say and do in this world. Always the ego will doubt it. Even if you have a wonderful experience, the ego will doubt it. Even if you have a joyful experience, I guarantee you the ego will doubt it. So this movie has got blessings abound. Not only do we get to see calmness in action, but then we get to see calmness still having to face accusers, doubt thoughts. That's what I call mind training. Are you in with me? Are you ready to take on the doubts of the ego and rise above them? Are you ready to soar like with the winds of, wings of eagles high up into the stratosphere of spirit? Are you with me? Are you willing to face death and look it right in the eye and go, you have no power over me. I am the Christ. I was created by God. I am not going to give in to ego beliefs. And we need, wit we need uh, examples, we need models. On Thanksgiving I did a talk over at La Casa de Milagros and, and it was beautiful questions that came there and, and I said, yeah, we, we need two things to really experience who we are. We need opportunities and we need role models. <laughs> oh, wow. You give us some opportunities and you give us role models and whew, no stopping us. We are going back into the light of heaven. And that's what I think this movie is loaded with. It's loaded with opportunities. Sully has got opportunities abounding to, 
choose the truth. It's loaded with opportunities. You've got your, your co-pilot. You've got all the you've got all the flight attendants. You've got all the passengers. And you've got air traffic control on the radio. Wow, that's a lot of opportunities right there. And what's going on on the ground? Well, you've got your wife. You've got two daughters. You've got, you've got the media. Oh, believe me, after this event, you know, you're going on David Letterman, you're going on, you've got media, Katie Couric interviewing you. You're just going to get hit with so many opportunities. And then if that's not enough, you've got your own profession, your own profession asking you, why did you do? Why did you do what you did? The questioning your moves questioning your motives, questioning your actions. All right, Sully, you're going to help us. We can handle it. We have to face this every day, too. We all have to face this. But Sully is going to have to show us how it's done. Let's see some grace in action. Let's see some temptation coming from every angle. Let's see how we walk through and face the ego without giving into it. That's what we like to see. We like role models. Show us the way. So this, this is a treat for all of us, you know, because we're going to take an adventure. And there's one more thing. I think this maybe this is the unspoken spiritual aspect of this movie. I mean, most of us would be shocked with this kind of experience, but, but actually Sully has a premonition. He has, he has a premonition. Will Jesus and the Holy Spirit use premonitions? Yes, they will. Sometimes they give us a glimpse of something that's going to happen before it happens. Why do they do this? So we're not shocked out of our gourd when it happens. <laughs> We've got something to recall. And, and actually, this movie begins with a premonition. A premonition is only a, a glimpse of some, of some hypothetical situation in order to draw our attention back into the moment so we can be keenly in the present moment. So that when something happens, we are not completely shocked and debilitated by it. I think that's one of the aspects of this movie that is, is really the most spiritual, is that, that, that Sully will get a premonition that something's going to go wrong with the plane <laughs> before it goes wrong with the plane. Because, as I said, this is a rare, rare, rare thing that goes wrong with the plane. Birds don't fly into two engines of a jumbo jet at the same time over the, one of the largest cities in the world. It just doesn't happen. But it's going to seem to happen. But the premonition is just an alert so that he's not too shocked by it. So he can stay calm. And, and you can't really talk to premonitions. I mean, don't go to your boss and try to tell your boss, I had a premonition I'm going to be leaving work <laughs> on Monday morning. Because <laughs> the boss is going to go, well, why don't you just get fired right now then? <laughs> you, don't, you can't really tell your wife about, always about the premonition or your children. You can't tell your coworkers. It's something that's meant for your mind just to be like a little sign, a little symbol. And I think that's something that we can't overlook, uh, that, that, that Sully will get a premonition. And, and even the premonition is just getting his attention. And, and, and he needs, we need to have our attention on God. We need to really learn how to put our attention on God. I mean, if I could advise one thing, it's like, just put your full attention on God and pull it away from everything else. I mean absolutely everything else. You know, wake up in the morning with your eyes sparkling. Jump out of bed. Today is God's. 
It is my gift to him. Today I will judge nothing that occurs. You know, today belongs to God. Today is God's. God will use it for my healing. Today does not belong to my employer. No, it does not belong to the people in my life. It doesn't even belong to the person who I had believed I was. Today is God's. And when we give the day to God, you can rest assured there will be miracles. If you give the day to God, the miracles are natural. The miracles will shower on you. Shower on your awareness if you give the day to God. And this is what Sully is going to show us. He's, he basically, in his own way, he's not like doing Hail Mary in the cockpit. Hail Mary, full of grace. No, no. he's not overtly religious. He's just a, a safe pilot who believes in safety. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I like that. I like a pilot who believes in safety. I want that one flying my plane. <laughs> I don't care whether they're intelligent or not. I don't care whether they're beautiful or ugly. I don't care if they're tall or short. I like, I like a pilot who, who's into safety. <laughs> for everyone. I'm not talking just for a few, but for everyone. That's a Jesus pilot for me who's into the safety and security of everyone. So here we go. Sit back, enjoy the ride, enjoy the flight. <laughs> enjoy your three and a half minute flight today from every angle. And I will pop in from time to time in, in this flight. I will be your flight coordinator today. And uh, we have an excellent cap. Captain Chesney will be your captain today. Uh, Jeff, Jeff is the uh, co-pilot. They both have really cool little mustaches. I like cool little pilots that are into safety with the mustaches. We're going to have a good flight today. Enjoy your flight. <laughs> uh, uh, have a good flight, and I'll come in from time to time to remind you to enjoy the flight. Enjoy the flight. Enjoy the flight of this world, because we have a great teacher inside of us that's called the Holy Spirit, who's a very good flight coordinator and director. And let's have some fun with the Holy Spirit today. For some of you who don't fly, you're going to have a great flight too. If this is your first flight, that's good too. Let's have a really good flight. <laughs> okay, I'll be back. I'll be back to join you on 